Pastor Axel welcomes you to Evangel World Outreach Center. Our weekly worship services are every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. located at 236 Washington Street, Boonton, New Jersey 07005. We are a small church with a big vision for northern New Jersey. Come be a part of our family. Now to my second part today, please God, don't let you covering the part for me. We heard last Sunday how Jesus cares and God cares about us. Amen. All people in heaven care about us. All safe people care about us. Do you know that even people in hell care? Well, if you don't believe me, let's find Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16, 19, verse 31 says, Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was splendid, clothed in pure and fine linen, and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there long for scrapes from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the palace of the dead, to the place of the dead. Then in torment he saw Abraham in a far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had have, you have everything you wanted. And Lazarus had nothing. So now here, so now he is here being comforted in your anguish. And beside there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. For I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. You brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. Within a serious time, even the people in hell, they wish they could get out. Do you know that about roughly 110 million people ever entered, 110 billion people ever entered this globe we call Earth. But the Bible says everybody has been chosen to have a life with Jesus. Everybody has been chosen to be united with the Father. But only if you make it. Why? Because people are so focused on their own lifestyle, on their own thing. I want to do this. I want to explore this. I want to enjoy this. Let nobody interfere with what I want to do. Well, it's all nice and said and done. It is long to live here on Earth. But when the end comes, it all going to change. Because here we see, see before Jesus came on this earth, before he came as a man on this earth, the Bible says there was a place called hell, Shiloh, Sh 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 Shiloh, in Hades. And there was a place all together, but the God, the people that believed in God were separated from the other ones. And there was a chasm. You remember the Bible says when Jesus, when he was crucified, he passed on. He for three days. He was in the innermost being on this earth and releasing and changing the whole atmosphere in hell. And Jesus took the one that believed in Jehovah God, he took him out there. And he took him into paradise with him today. Hallelujah. But I tell you today, if Jesus cares and God cares and all the people in heaven care and all the saved people care and all people in hell care, how about we care, amen? How about you and I care for the lost out there? How about we do our utmost to reunite to the Father? Let us win one loss at a time because one makes a big difference. So my last appeal to you today is 
please care. I pray that the Holy Spirit will move up on your heart and burn your heart for the lost. I pray that Jesus Christ will touch you and give you a heart that breaks the heart of God. Hallelujah. Because people go to hell and we don't stop. We have to stop people and we have to stop people to go to hell. We have to snatch them up before they get there. Amen. You and I we have been appointed and anointed by God to bring a change in our surroundings. In Romans 1, 1, 1 verse 16 it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. When you open your mouth and the gospel comes out, the power of God be released out of you. Hallelujah. It will bring a transformation. It will bring a change. All we have to do is open our mouth and let the gospel come out of us. Amen. Don't hold the gospel in you. I told you last Sunday and the Sunday before, there's power bubble up in you. There's power in you that wants to come out of you to open your mouth and don't be afraid. The Bible says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. His kingdom come. His will be done on this earth as on heaven. On this earth as it is in heaven. I have to ask myself, do I fit in the will of God on earth? Do I adjust my walk, my behavior to the will of God? His will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. If you step up to and get into the will of God, He maybe replaces us. But God of mercy, we don't want to be replaced. We want to step out in faith. We want to step out in the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to step out and let the power of God that's right in us come out and do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or hope for because there's power in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. The only thing that keeps us from that transition, the only thing that keeps us from stepping out of it is called F-E-A-R, fear. Fear of what? Fear of rejection. Fear of people making fun of us. Fear of what people think. Let me fast forward. When you're at the end of life, do you think you care about what people think about you? Do you think on your deathbed, you, have you ever seen somebody in the hospital on the deathbed knowing they would pass away? Do you ever think do you ever think or hurt the person say, I want to find out what other people think about me? They don't care. Why? Because they enter the maturity where they're no longer being dictated, directed by the surroundings around them. Because they have come to a place where it doesn't matter what people care. But Jesus Christ says that he laid down his life for us, that we have a life and resurrected with him. Amen. And when we receive, when we receive Jesus into our hearts, we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. I must crucify myself daily, deny of my flesh, and take up the cross and follow Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. Gospel stands for go, show people eternal life. G O go and show people eat eternal and eternal life. Gospel, amen. You and I have been, have been called into showing people eternal life with the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. The most important question I ask you today, do you care? Do you really care? Yes, you see, we can say we care. How come 95% of Christians today in the church, 95% of the born again believers in the church have never witnessed your person. This is definitely an issue. This is definitely a serious problem. If everybody in the church would do what God asked them to do, the world we're living in would not be the world we see today. The problems we would struggle today in today's world would not be the problems we would have in our world today. But the church is why. While people go to hell, the church is why. While people go in the wrong direction, the church is quiet. While people don't know who to turn to, the church is quiet. It's about time that the church rises up and speaks out and speaks up and represents God in the way He wants to be represented. Amen. Can you say amen? Hallelujah.
Can you say amen to what God wants us to do? Hallelujah. The presence of the Holy Spirit can change your life or more. All you have to do is acknowledge Him. Acknowledge. Why acknowledge people? People, dead. people can't do anything for you. People cannot do anything for you as much as the Holy Spirit can do for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Because the people only have limited resources. But God never tells us to live by limited resources. God says live by the unlimited resources that He gives up to us. Amen? If we step out and we step forward, He'll open up heaven and the unlimited resources of heaven will come into our lives. You may say, well, I don't have much today because maybe we didn't step out in what God wants to step out into. Well, you may say, how can I tell people about the Lord? How can I care about the people? How can I witness the people? I'm sure glad you asked this question because next month we're going to have an evangelism training. Amen. It's going to be so easy, so, so, so wonderful. Within two minutes, you can lead somebody to Christ. Two minutes. You stand in the checkout line in the store. Within less than two minutes, you can lead somebody to the Lord. You get to the gas station and pump up the gas in your car. Within two minutes, you can lead somebody to the Lord. Amen. Would you like to know how to do that? Well, I'm glad nobody likes to do that. Would you like to know how to lead somebody to minutes to the Lord? Hallelujah. Don't let fear overcome you. The power is the gospel within us. Don't focus on earth. Focus on eternity. Focus on what's coming. Hallelujah. See, in earth, this everything, everything on earth will pass away. You can't take anything to heaven except one thing. One thing for sure you can take to heaven. Would you like to know the one thing you can take to heaven? Souls. Souls, hallelujah. Souls. The Bible says when those who win souls for the kingdom of God, they're like the bright, bright, bright star in the night that beats out and bright in all the other stars. And that's what we want to become. We want to become that bright morning star. That bright star that shines into the world. I call it a morning star. You may, you may say, well, Jesus is the morning star. Yes, but Jesus says, you are the light. I am the light of the world. Amen. You are the light of the world. We are the salt in this world. Let us step up to what God wants us to do. We'll give you more details at the end of the month for the upcoming evangelism sessions. Well, we, maybe we should call it evangelism session. We're going to turn it into a lifestyle. Amen. The Christian, that Christianity lifestyle. So wherever we go, and I know when you speak to people, God will give you the word of knowledge. You may speak to someone and God says, like, tell that person that something's wrong with this, this body. Oh, you're going to get the word of knowledge where you're going to speak to someone and you're going to say, look, because of this in the generation that you came out of, that is the root of the mind, that's the root of the devil, that's the root that keeps you not moving forward. God can expand your horizon. God's going to impact your mind. The Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. All you need to do is just become the vessel. Amen. All you need to just become the vessel. A vessel has no say, does not know what to do, doesn't have to know what to do. A vessel is only a vessel that says, I am ready and available. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can become a leader of someone else. You become a leader to those you bring to the kingdom of God. I want to speak briefly on the message, the motherly characteristic of God. Amen. The motherly characteristic of God. In Titus 2, verse 3 and 5, it says, Older women. Now, what is older women? An older woman is somebody older than you, right? One year, one month, one day, older than you. All women likewise are to be reverent behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, 
to be self-controlled, pure, work at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. So every woman in the church has a responsibility. Do you remember in the Old Testament how did they pass all the information? The parents, the father, the mother shared what had happened and they passed it on. And in the old days, I, I know we had brother, uh, we had mothers, they called the church mothers, they were praying, amen. When they started praying, the building was shaking. We lack this, we, we lack those mothers today. We lack mothers that can pray and break through and shake the building, amen. In the old days, there were mothers in the church, older mothers, when they opened up their mouth, they called the name of the Lord, something would happen. The atmosphere would change, the power of God would come in and transform. Where are these moms today? And so your mother today, I ask you to go close, draw close to the Lord, become that mother. The message reminds us that a mother's less the impact not only her own children, but others around her as well. And so what is a mother, what is a mother, what is a mother for you? A mother, what is a mother for you? Mother is somebody that you feel comfortable with. That you feel the love. See, fathers are important. But I know when my kids get hurt when they were younger, they never came to me. I don't know why. They always read to mom. Because the moms have something fathers don't have. Amen? If your father can say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, Mothers are very important because they keep the family together. They keep the love intact. They keep the, they keep the family running. And so what are the qualities of a good mother? A good mother has a positive attitude, amen? A positive attitude. See, giving birth to a child does not make you a mother. We've learned that giving birth to a child doesn't make a person mother. It's what comes after the birth that makes her mother. Because there's some horrible moms out there. They give birth to the child, what they do, they don't care about the child anymore. Have nothing to do with the child. How can it be a mother? It would be the same way you come to church today, you come to church once, and the next day the church doesn't want to have anything to do with you, dismiss you, abandon you. See, the church is like a mother. You come in with your burden, with some heart, with your problem, with your situ situations, and the church lets you become who you are. Amen. You can let your guard come down. You can expose yourself in your feelings, in your hurts, in your pains, and the church is there to embrace you, to share the love of God, to lift you up, when you go, when you're down, the church raises you up. It's the same as a mother. When the kids are, when the kids are down, what happens? The mother raises them up because of the positive attitude. The mother has the ability to inspire. Inspire the children. We all need to be inspired sometimes, amen? Thank God when we, now we're older, we're grown as we, we adults. But thank God that God has given us His Word that inspires us. Same like a mother inspires the children, the Word of God inspires us. They have a sense of loyalty. They have it all. Moms have the patience. Because the fathers, what happened? They say, boy, you don't listen. I'm going to take my belt. Well, boy, you don't listen. Or, you know, in the old days, remember you got spanked, which was good. I thank my father for the spending I got because I turned out somewhat okay. Hallelujah. Look at the children today. They didn't expect what happened. Look at the mess we have today. Mothers take responsibility. They have determination. They're trustworthy. Why is, why is a mother so important? Because a mother is the emotional backbone of a family. If you take the mom out of a family, the whole family collapses. Maybe that's why God many times takes a father first before he takes a mother. Because the mother is the backbone of the family. They provide a place for everyone's feeling and do the best 
and keep them from being hurt. Why is a mother's love important? All of the types of love a mother is the strongest. A mother's love is unconditional and eternal. Unconditional. If you look at my wife, my beautiful wife, and I compare her love towards the children, and my love towards the children, it's different. The children get a lot, they, they get away with a lot more things than what they would get, get away with me. Why? Because moms have an unconditional love, amen. They have a love that just want to pour into the lives of the children. A mother's instinct to protect her offspring begins from the moment she knows she is pregnant. When a woman is pregnant, and she knows the baby is in there. She protects the baby already in the stomach. And it doesn't matter if it's a human mom or an animal mother or, you know, a mother always protects their babies. Even in the nature, the animals that protect the babies. If you don't believe me, we know we have some bears around here. You try to come close to bear with the little cubs around. Who? You think it's going to run first, the bear or you? Because they protect the little ones. Why, what are the qualities of a mother and what does a mother do for her family? The mother is the light of the family. She takes care of her husband, children, home, and household chores. Together they help hand in hand to keep the family, raise the children, teach them values, and the culture of which they belong and provide the basic needs like food, shelter, and clothes. The mother is what? The light of the family. The church is the light of the family. Amen? Thank God that He has given us moms. Thank God that He has given us churches. Thank God that He has given us a light that will shine unto us so that we have to fall. So we didn't trip over our uh, in, in, over the stones in darkness. So we didn't trip over things. Amen? God has given us a light. He has given us a light. The mom of the life of the family. And if you have a mom today, call her up or tell her how much you love her. Tell her how much you care about her. Tell her how much she means to you. And if you ever send that to her dear mom, ask her to forgive. Reach out and tell her, Mom, I'm sorry. How many children have the resentment towards a mom? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will hold back the blessings. Unforgiveness. Do you know? Do you really know that God really, really loves you? That He's a wonderful plan for your life. He has such a wonderful plan for your life. He cares for you. I want to ask you an important question today. If you, should, if you should pass away this very moment, do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're going to be with the Lord? Do you know for sure beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're going to be with the Lord? Well, the Bible says, all have sinned. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But God's gift is eternal life. It also says that whosoever calls the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. And you are whosoever. We all are. Let us stand. I want to pray and pray over your life. Lord, I pray health and long life over these precious people. Jesus, do a quick work in our hearts. And if someone doesn't know you today, 
I ask you that you will let them know you today with all eyes closed. If you want to see and receive this free gift of God today, you say, I want to receive this gift that God has for me. Raise your hands. I want you to know prayer. You can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe that you have risen and you're coming back for me again. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I'm saved. I'm born again. And I'm on my way to heaven. Because I have cheese in my heart. Hallelujah. That's how easy it is to receive the Lord. And if you make the commitment today, I'll tell you, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. No it's drawing you to God. Run to God, not from God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's rejoice when someone gets saved. There's rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. Please check our website for church updates and notes on upcoming sermons. Have a blessed week.